Hey everybody, uh, today we're going to go over the review for the uh, unit test, <clears throat> so let's get right to it. This first problem is asking us to calculate the slope of a line that has these two points, 2 comma 9 and negative 8 comma negative uh, positive 11. So let's remind ourselves of the formula, which is m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So we have to label our points. We have x1, y1 and x2, y2. Let's plug these points in. So we have 11 minus 9 over negative 8 minus 2. Okay. 11 take away 9 would be 2 and negative 8 minus 2 is negative 10. Let's simplify that. We'll divide these both by 2. We're going to get negative 1 fifth. That's it. Okay, number 2, same deal. So x1, y1 x2, y2, I'm going to write the formula again, equals m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Our y sub 2 is negative 19 minus uh, negative 9. Our x sub 2 is 1, our y sub 1 is 1. So notice that our, our x is not changing. Interesting this is going to become negative 19 plus 9 over 0, negative 10 over 0. Anything divided by 0 is undefined. You cannot divide anything by 0. So it's going to be an undefined slope. Uh, that's going to be a vertical line because x is not changing. It's going up and down. Right? It's going to look like this. It's undefined. Okay, number 3. I apologize ahead of time, by the way. There's a few typos of this thing, which you'll see. Some missing parts. Uh, not this one yet though. And again, find the slope. So x1, y1, and x2, y2. So 10 take away 8, and negative 4 take away negative 9. Uh, I guess I should write this down again. So m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. 10 take away 8 is 2. Uh, this is going to become plus, so negative 4 plus 9. And negative 4 plus 9 is 5, so 2 fifths. So there we go. Okay. Alright, so this part we did not do this in class. Uh, we skipped over this because we just kind of ran out of time. So we're going to do this here. It's actually really straightforward. So it's asking us to find the intercepts of this equation. They give it to us in standard form. We just have to remember that when you cross the x-axis, your y value is going to be 0. And when you cross the y-axis, your x value is going to be 0. So you can find this pretty quickly. You're just going to plug in 0 for the other variable. So we're looking for the x-intercept. We're going to take this equation, plug in 0 for y, and we'll find out what x is. So 2x plus 3 times 0, we're going to plug in 0 for y equals 6. 3 times 0 is 0. So 2x plus 0 equals 6. 2x plus 0 is 2x. 6 divided by 6, sorry, divide by 2. I should be using a different color for that step, actually. Divide by 2, and x will be equal to 3. So our x-intercept would be 3 comma 0. There's the coordinates of that. So 3 comma 0. And then the other one's going to be the y-intercept. So we're going to rewrite the equation and plug in 0 for x. So we're going to put 2 times 0 plus 3y equals 6, plug in 0 for, for x. 2 times 0 is 0, so 0 plus 3y equals 6. 0 plus 3y is 3y. 3y equals 6. Divide by the coefficient, which in this case is 3. So y is going to be equal to 2. So our y intercept is going to be 0 comma 2. Okay. 0 comma 2. All right, same thing here. So we're going to find our x-intercept first. So negative 7x plus 3. And we're going to plug in 0 for y. So, <clears throat> so 3 times 0 is 0. So negative 7x plus 0 equals 14. Uh, negative 7x plus 0 is negative 7x equals 14. We're going to divide by our coefficient, which is negative 7. So x is going to be equal to negative 2. So negative 2 comma 0, that's our x-intercept. 
So now to find the y-intercept, we're going to plug in 0 for x. So negative 7, close parentheses, and put 0 in there. And plus 3y equals 14. This cancels, becomes 0 plus 3y equals 14. 0 plus 3y is 3y. 3y equals 14. We're going to divide by our coefficient, which is uh, 3. Let's so divide by 3. And y will be equal to 14 thirds or 4 and 2 thirds. Doesn't really matter. That, that's, that's honestly fine. <clears throat> so 0, 14 thirds. 0, 14 thirds. There you go. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> Number 6. What's the slope and y intercept? So the slope is the rate of change, which is right here. So y equals mx plus b is our slope intercept form. So our m is going to be negative 3 fourths, and our b is going to be negative 5. Okay. Uh, solve for y. So we want to get y by itself. We want to, put this, we want to make this as, put this in slope intercept form. So I'm going to rewrite the equation. 7x plus 4y equals 20. So to solve for y, first we're going to move that 7x. It's really just a literal equal. Like, oh, what am I doing? Minus 7x minus 7x. So we're going to cancel it out. We have 4y equals negative 7x plus 20. So now we're going to divide by our coefficient, which is 4. So we're going to have y equals negative 7 fourths x plus 5. That's it. Just negative 7 fourths plus 5. What is the slope and why does that equation? Well, the slope is going to be our rate of change, which is negative 7 fourths. And our y intercept is 5. Or 0, 5, I guess, depending on how specific we want to get. Okay. Uh, 8 we can't do. 9 we can't do. 10 we can't do. We did a ton of that on delta math, so I'm not concerned about that. Uh, solve for y. So we get y by itself. Again, this is just a literal equation. Let me a different color here. So 3x plus 4y equals 20. We're solving for y, so our target variable is y. I did this by itself. So we're going to subtract 3x from both sides. That cancels. We're going to have 4y equals negative 3x plus 20. And we're going to divide by our coefficient, which is 4. So y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 5. So negative 3 fourths x plus 5. I want to graph this. We can't graph that either. Solve for y. Okay, it's another, another literal equation. So we're going to do 2x plus 3y equals 6. Solving for y. So our target variable is y right here. And that means we're going to get rid of 2x first. So we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. So we have 3y equals negative 2x plus 6. We're going to get rid of our coefficient, which is 3. So we're going to divide by that. We're going to divide everything by that. So that goes away. We'll have y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 2. We're going to simplify that. We have our rate of change, and we have our y-intercept. So negative 2 thirds x plus, plus 2. Okay. Graph that. We can't. We could, but we don't have a graph, unfortunately. Solve for y, same thing, okay. So 3x plus, sorry, not plus, 3x minus 7y equals 14, and we're solving for y, so our target variable is y. Okay, we're going to subtract 3x from both sides first. So negative 7y equals negative 3x plus 14. And we're going to divide by our coefficient, which is negative 7. So that goes away. Y is going to be equal to 3 7 x minus 2. Oh, you can't see that, sorry. There we go. So 3 7 x minus 2. And we can't graph that, unfortunately. Okay, given the linear, let me zoom out a little bit so we can see more. 
Given the linear function 5x plus y equals 10, mark the two equivalent representations. So we need to get this in slope-intercept form first. So 5x plus y equals 10. So let's get y by itself. We're going to subtract 5x from both sides. So this cancels. We have y equals negative 5x plus 10. So that's one equivalent representation. There should be a graph. It's a negative rate of change, so I know I know this is out, right? Because this is a positive slope. You can tell because it's going up much, right? This is negative. Let's see if it's right. So 10, yeah, it looks like it's up there. Yeah, kind of looks like it would go up there. Now, this is interesting. They don't give us the y-intercept. Um, interesting, but we could find the x-intercept. If we plug in 0 for y, right? Plug in 0 for y, we're going to get y is equal to, t y is equal to 10. It's all the way, oh, sorry, the, sorry, the x-intercept. Plug in 0 for, um, for y, rather. You're going to get uh, x is equal to 2. Because you're going to divide, yeah, let's, I'll show you what I mean rather than me just saying it. So 5x plus y equals 10. So if we plug in 0 for, x, uh, 0 for y, rather, right, we're going to get 5x equals 10, x equal to 2 after you divide. So the x-intercept would be 2 comma 0, which is there. Um, the rate of change is negative 5. So we go down 5 over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yep. That's definitely, yep. So you can kind of tell this is going to hit 10, but if you're not sure, you can find the x-intercept, like in the previous problems. That's the same x-intercept, and then it has the rate of change that we know it needs. So Because the y-intercept doesn't really help us in this case. So that's it. You kind of also know it has to be this, because this is not the right equation, and this is not the right graph. So by process of elimination, it has to be c anyway. So even if you don't remember how to do the... Um, the x-intercept, you can just do it by process elimination. Okay. The graph below shows a proportional or non-proportional relationship. It is going to be proportional because it has a constant rate of change. What am I doing? saying? I totally screwed that up. Hold on a second. Yeah, I totally screwed that up. I'm sorry. It is not proportional. I misspoke. <clears throat> I was thinking linear or non-linear. I don't know why I did that. This is non-proportional. Uh, real quick and easy way to think of it. If it's going through the, if it's a linear function that's going through the origin, it's proportional. If it's not going through the origin, it's not proportional. So because this is not going through the origin, this is not proportional. This is linear, and it goes through the origin, so therefore it's proportional. Sorry about that. It's, it's, well, it's not really Friday, is it? It's Thursday, but it feels like Friday because we don't have school tomorrow. Uh, this is non-proportional because it's linear and it does not go through the origin. So this be non-proportional. Okay. If y varies directly with x, <clears throat> when y is, oh, I zoomed in a little too much. If y varies, so this is direct variation, so if you remember it's y equals kx. If y varies directly with x when y is 54, and y, x is 50, when, and y is 54 when x is 9, find y when x is 3 and a half. Okay, so let's find the constant variation. So we're going to plug in 54 for y, and we don't know what k is. And we know x is 9, so we're going to solve for k. Divide both sides by 9. We're going to get 6. So our constant of variation is 6. So y equals kx. We're looking for y. We know our k is 6, and our x is 3.5. So what's that going to be? 21, I think. Let's check. 6 times 3.5. Yep, 21. So y equals 21. There we go. OK, number 19. If y varies directly with x when y is, and y is 6 when x is 4, find y when x is 7. So same thing, y equals kx. Uh, 6 is y. We don't know what k is, but we know x is 4. Divide both sides by 40 to k by itself. And that means k is going to be 6 fourths or 3 over 2, or 1 and a half. Okay, now the other one's going to be y equals kx. We don't know what y is. We know k is 3 over 2. And we know x is 7. So find y. So it's going to be 21 over 2. Or, what is that? Um, 10 and a half. So 10 and a half is right here. And that's it. Is that the last one? That's it. All right, so hopefully that was uh, helpful, guys. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit here. Let me know if you still have any questions. I posted the, the assessment, the actual assessments, due Monday, so I'll give a little more time in class in case you need it. But uh, this should help. All right. Thanks, guys.